This video will be for anybody who wants to perform their own earth curvature experiment. I'm going to cover the shortcut formula and I'll also go over how to do the math from scratch. So right here is the uh, shortcut formula. So the height obscured equals uh, distance to target minus distance to horizon squared times 8 inches. If you've watched other flat earth videos you've probably seen this equation but without the distance to horizon part of it. Uh, you probably just heard distance in miles squared times 8 inches. And that's not wrong, but that's for an observer height or a telescope height of 0 inches, which means your telescope or your camera would be sitting on top of the water. Um, that's not practical. I assume you don't want to get your equipment wet. Plus, uh, you have to have your telescope higher than any waves that might be present. So we have to include this term because it could be significant. Uh, okay, so I'll just describe these terms real quick. Uh, so height obscured is the height obscured by the curvature of the earth in inches. If you divide by 12, you can convert it to feet. Anything shorter than this height should be hidden behind the curve of the earth. Distance to target is just the distance between the observer and whatever he's looking at. Uh, distance to horizon. <clears throat> uh, this is in miles, and this is based on the height of the observer or your telescope slash camera height. Um, you know, might also Hear this called the tangent line, and this has to do with the geometry used to calculate it. Uh, you actually don't have to calculate this. There's a calculator online that'll do it for you. Uh, if you go to Google and you type in distance to horizon calculator, that should be the first or second in your list. Uh, and this is ringbell.co.uk slash info slash hdis.htm uh, It's pretty simple here. You just put your height. I'm going to put it in feet. Let's just say 3 feet. Calculate distance. And your distance to horizon is then 2.1 miles. So let's go back here. So you would take your distance to target, say it was 5 miles, and your telescope was 3 feet off the ground. Uh, then distance horizon would be 2.1, subtract that from your 5, you've got 2.9, so now you're squaring 2.9 instead of the 5, and then multiplying that by 8 inches. So you can see it can be significant if you're dealing with smaller distances. Uh, these are just calculations from the experiment I did. Uh, you can go watch my first video on that, uh, or you can pause it here and look at this if you want. But I'm going to move on to the math from scratch. Okay, this is probably math you guys haven't done since high school, so I'm going to try to break it down into sections so it's not too overwhelming. This is your basic overview here. The circle represents the Earth. Point A is where the observer is. Point B is where the target is. D is the distance between them in miles, and that's this arc here. R is the radius of the Earth. And the average radius of the Earth is 3,959 miles. If you live on the equator, you can add 4 miles to that. So what we're looking for here is this green line, H, and that represents the maximum height that would be obscured by the curvature of the Earth if you had someone standing at point A looking out in this direction. So this line right here is a tangent line drawn from point A to this maximum height, H. And if you don't know what a tangent line is, it's just a line that touches a circle at one point. And a rule of tangent lines is if you draw a radial line from the tangent point to the center of the circle, that line is always perpendicular to the tangent line. So we know this angle here is 90 degrees, which gives us a right triangle. If you have a right triangle and you know any angle in one side, you can figure out the other two sides. So right now we only know one side is R, and we need to find angle X. But we can find that because we know this arc D. So the formula for that is arc length equals the angle in radians times the radius. So in this case, D equals X times R, and if you rearrange that, X equals D divided by R. Now when I did my experiment, my distance was 5.33 miles, so I'll use that for the calculations. So here we have X equals 5.33 divided by 3,959. Let's do that. And you get this number, and that's in radians. So now we have angle X, and we know this side R, so we can figure out the hypotenuse R plus H. So the formula we need is the cosine formula, and that's cosine of X equals the adjacent side divided by, divided by the hypotenuse. So here's X, 
This is the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is r plus h. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cosine of this number, and when you do this, make sure your calculator is set to radians. If you set it to degrees, you're going to get the wrong answer. So I'm going to hit the cosine button, and I get this number. So that number equals 3,959 divided by 3,959 plus h. I'm going to multiply this term to this side. And I get this number right here, plus 0 0.999 99 times h equals 3,959. So I'll subtract this number from the 3,959. And I get this number. And if I, if I divide that by the 0 0.999 99 I get... this number and that's h in miles I'm going to convert that to feet by multiplying by 5,280 feet per mile and I get 18.944 feet but uh, we're not done yet because remember when I was talking about the shortcut formula I said you had to account for the telescope height and this setup right here is for an observer height of zero so we've got more math to do so I kind of zoomed in here so you can see it better uh, this red line is T, and that represents the telescope height. And this line here is uh, another tangent line drawn from your telescope lens to the surface of the Earth. So uh, this point C here is a tangent point, and it represents the zero height equivalent of someone standing at point A with, tel with a telescope height of T. So all that means is if you had your telescope on the ground and we're looking this way, you'd see the exact same thing as someone over here with their telescope height, you know, height t off the ground. And so that makes this uh, arc z, that's the distance of horizon, and that's the number we use in the shortcut formula. So that's what we're trying to find out. So uh, again, this is a tangent line, so we know that any radial line drawn to the center of the circle is perpendicular to it. So again, we know this is 90 degrees, so we've got another right triangle. Now we don't have any angles this time, but we do know two sides. We know R and we know R and, and T on this side. So we can figure out any of the angles because we have those two. So again, we're going to need the cosine formula. So the cosine of Y, this angle here, equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So cosine of Y equals R divided by R plus T. So when I did my experiment, my telescope height was two feet. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to convert that to miles. So I'm going to divide by 5,280. That gives me that number right here. So now the cosine of y equals 3,959 divided by 3,959.00037878787878788. So I'm going to do that calculation real quick. And I get this number right here. So now I need to take the inverse cosine of this. And again, make sure your calculator is set to radians. My calculator has a shift button that changes these functions to the inverses. So now I'm going to click on the inverse cosine button, and I get this number. And that's, that's angle y in radians. So we just need to take our arc length formula from before. Arc length equals angle in radians times the radius. And we're going to solve for z. So z equals y times r, so z equals this number times 3959 miles, and that gives you 1.732 miles. So that's your distance to horizon. So now we just need to redo this with uh, 5.33 minus 1.73 instead of just using 5.33. So let's do that real quick. So again, we're going to solve for x. So x equals d divided by r, and d in this case is going to be 5.33 minus 1.73, which is 3.6. So x equals 3.6 divided by 3,959. So our new angle x is this in radians. So now we're going to use our cosine formula. So 
Cosine of this number is going to equal 3,959 divided by 3,959 plus h. So I'm going to take the cosine of this, and then I'll multiply that term over again. And I get this number, plus 0 0.999995865680 times h equals 3,959. So I'll subtract this number from 3,959. I get this number, and if I divide that by the 0.9999586568, I get 3,958. This number, and that's your new h in miles, so we're going to convert that to feet again. And now we've got a, an h of 8.642. So anything below that height should not be visible. So you can see the huge difference here between the 18.94 feet and 8.642 feet. And we, I only had a telescope height of two feet. So when you're dealing with small distances, you know, just a few feet off the ground makes a big difference in this calculation. So there you go. Uh, good luck to anyone who's going to try this for themselves.